Hi everyone, I'm Gabriel Ha, here with Goey Native. Ale is not with me, as you can see, because he is on vacation slash a conference talking to customers, that sort of thing. But we wanted to make sure to release content for Goey Native, you know, each month for you guys. It's near the end of February, but it's still February, so we are keeping true to that. I had the privilege earlier of talking to Gore Nishanov. He is um, actually a recent addition to the Visual C++ team. I think he's been around for maybe around two months. I guess we'll find out in the interview. So let's get right to that. I'm very pleased to be here uh, with Gore. Gore is your your newest uh, to the team, right? How long have you? How long? Have uh, you been here? I joined the team in December, about two months ago. Okay. Uh, before I was uh, in OS division for 15 years. Mm. Wow. And sure. before that, I was involved briefly with for a few years uh, with C++. Uh, Genetic programming project okay. back in uh, RBI. I see. Well, well, with, with one of the inventors of STL, <laughs> so a bit library, Dave Messer. Very cool. So yeah, we're we're very glad to have Gore on the Visual C++ team now as our uh, as a developer. So um, so Gore, uh, you recently went to the standardization conference, is that correct? Oh yes, uh, we had in Isaqua. Uh, C++ standardization uh, meeting, and uh, C++14 is almost out of the door, yep. so it will not be delayed like before when you're <laughs> saying C++0x, no, 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 C++14 is uh, coming out in C++14, and uh, I was in concurrency subgroup, or study group, okay. and one of the changes that were made very, very late into the game is a very, very trivial uh, trivial change. It, it, it's even funny to talk about it, but it's uh, we renamed shared mutex that was already part of the uh, voted in C++ standard into shared timed mutex. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can later explain the motivation why uh, we went yeah. for that change. And that went through. Okay, so um, in C++11, we had, I think, four standard mutex types added. And mutex is also, sometimes it's called a lock, it's a primitive for mutual exclusion. Mm -hmm. So it has lock and unlock member functions. So when you lock it, nobody else can lock it. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually it is used to acquire lock and then manipulate some resource protected by that lock. And at the end, you can unlock it. And the mutex is, uh, the simplest primitive with as few operations as possible. It only has lock, unlock, and try lock. Mm -hmm. Then there is a time mutex variation which adds timed lock acquisitions mm -hmm. where you can say, okay, try acquiring a lock for about five seconds. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you fail to do so, well, stop trying after five seconds and let me know. Yeah. So essentially try log four and try log until is a timed variations uh, on, the, on, on the mutex. Mm -hmm. Then recursive mutex is a different flavor of mutex which allows mm -hmm. recursive acquisition. So it's when you acquire the lock, you start doing something with, this, with the protected uh, data or, yeah. right, uh, that is protected by the lock, and then you call some other function. And that function might not be aware that the log that protects the data is already held, mm -hmm. so it will try to uh, acquire the log again. Mm -hmm. So for regular mutex, it is considered an undefined behavior. So a debug version can maybe detect that and uh, throw an assert or just deadlock. Mm -hmm. But recursive mutex guards against that. So if you acquire the same lock from the same thread multiple times, uh, you can later release that lock multiple times and eventually the locks uh, get released. And then there is a variant for that uh, which combines timed acquisition with the recursive lock. So those primitives were available in C++11. So C++14 added shared mutex primitive which is essentially just like a mutex, but it supports two mode of acquisition. Uh, you can either hold exclusively that mutex, 
uh, those kind of mutics are also called reader writer logs. So if there is somebody who wants to modify the data, he acquires the log in exclusive mode or in the write mode. And um, when somebody wants to read, you don't have you you are not getting into a conflict with other people who want to uh, read the same data. So many people can acquire the log in a shared mode uh, simultaneously. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you have a bunch of readers now that are currently actively holding the log in the read mode, uh, well, you should not allow somebody to acquire the log in the write mode. Right. And vice versa. As soon as somebody grabs the write log, then nobody else can do a read log until the writer releases the log. Okay. So shared mutex is, um, is essentially extended version of the mutex which supports trilog shared, log shared, and unlock, sh uh, unlock shared operations. So in addition to having regular one, log, unlock, and trilog, it has uh, three more that supports acquisition in a shared mode. However, shared mutex was not consistent in naming with respect to the uh, to the mutexes we have uh, we had before. Yeah. Uh, the philosophy behind this four logs was that uh, mutex one is the most simplest one; it has the fewest number of operations, mm -hmm. and thus it can be implemented most cheaply on a particular platform. And then we add more operations on top, and that may make log slightly bigger, but uh, you don't have to pay for the extra functionality you're not using. Uh, we did not follow the philosophy with shared mutex, because shared mutex was actually combined time operations as well. So try log shared and try shared for, and try log shared until were mixed in with the shared, uh, shared okay. mutex. I see. So, so it kind of did everything. No, right. No, nothing to specialize right. it from one to Yes. And uh, to a degree, it depends on the platform whether this actually makes a difference or not. For example, let me quickly get my cheat sheet. So uh, on, I think on, uh, on, on Apple, MacBook Pro, uh, Mutex is 64 bytes. And timed Mutex, let me think. It's 120 bytes, mm. so there is there is a difference. Uh, shared mutex is 168 bytes, mm. so that's uh, and also shared time for, for the for Apple. There is no distinction between the shared mutex and shared time mutex. It's okay. all all the same. Mm. Bytes on Windows mutex is eight bytes. Wow, yep, it's quite a difference. Uh, time mutex 16. And I'm not interested in the recursive bits. Sure. <laughs> uh, so we'll just skip those. And the shared mutex in Windows, can you guess the number? 16, maybe? 8. Wow. And like. shared 10 mutex will be 16. Ah, so okay. essentially, by renaming uh, the shared mutex to shared 10 mutex, we left the room for a smaller and cheaper version ah, okay. of the mutex in the right. future. Yeah. And because it was so late in the game, we weren't able to actually introduce shared mutex for C++14 because you, we, we could only do such a little change like rename. Anything that wasn't bigger was considered to be absolutely impossible that late in the game because it's almost ready to ship the standard. So we were able to rename it and soon we'll introduce the shared uh, mutex in. And why? On Windows, shared mutex is so small, and by the way, it's actually the same size right. as mutex. Yeah. Well, because since Vista, we have wonderful slim reader writer lock uh, in Windows, SRW locks. Uh, they are just essentially anatomic. It's the int pointer sized value. It does not allocate any system resources neither in the constructor nor during the lock operations. I see. So, and it can never fail. It's one of those wonderful APIs that you have, you read on an SDN, and it's void everywhere. <laughs> None of the operations can actually fail, so you don't have to check for, mm. for an error code. 
Uh, and by the way, the same SRW log can serve as the mutex and as a shared mutex. Okay. It's one and the same. It's, it's, it does not uh, incur extra costs. Um, traditionally, people were concerned that using a reader writer log is more expensive than using an exclusive log. Mm -hmm. But in this case, they don't have to decide. They can always use SRW log, and if they use it in the exclusive uh, mode, it will be the fastest exclusive log in the system. If they use it in the shared mode, well, it is the fastest shared mutex uh, at the moment on the system. And it wasn't the, the case before we used to have critical section in Windows. And that critical section used to have an unusual failure mode. Uh, during log operation of a critical section, it would uh, attempt on demand to allocate a kernel event if it needed to actually suspend a thread and let it sleep for a while uh, while the lock is held by some, somebody else. But in some rare situations, you cannot acquire, uh, you cannot create on demand the event. And that would essentially throw an exception from the lock acquisition. And very few people were writing code to actually correctly handle. Mm. And if you try to handle it, it makes your code horrifyingly complicated. I see. So uh, I think in Vista, uh, we completely eliminated that error mode. Mm. Instead, there was an extra preallocated event, one per process, that uh, essentially a critical section will fall back to if it failed to allocate its own event. It will be slightly slower, but at least the log can never fail. Which is good. Yes. But you don't have to worry about critical section anymore exactly. because in addition to making this fixed critical section, we also had SRW log and conditional variable introduced in Vista that essentially do not fail ever. And uh, that allows us to implement mutex and shared mutex in this tiny little uh, you know, eight byte value. And uh, it's 8 byte and 64 bit. I think it's 32 bit, 32 uh, bit value on 32 bit ar architecture. Um, I think I'm done. Excellent. That's it for our show today. Big thanks to Gore for taking the time to talk to us about what's new and upcoming in C14. Standardization, I suppose. Uh, just making sure that there's consistency across uh, the shared mutex, so not just having shared time mutex, but also shared mutex, and taking advantage of existing infrastructures that have been around since, since Vista. So hope you guys will look forward to you know, taking advantage in the upcoming C14 of these nice, small, compact mutexes. So as for the show, this is going native. Um, you know, it's native all the time. If there's stuff that you would like to see, we do, you know, each episode um, is a little different. Some are more educational, like the ones you've seen today. Some of them, you know, could be more amusing, that sort of thing, or just, you know, more discussions on what's already out there, upcoming features, um, anything you guys are interested in, just, you know, leave, leave a comment in the comments below and we will make it happen. So I'm Gabriel Ha. Hopefully Ali will be here with me next week. Thanks for watching.